What's up, YouTube? Thanks for coming back for another video. So as you know, up here in the uh, the more cool season areas, it's uh, kind of getting into the what I call time for our uh, seasonal ritual, where we aerate, we overseed, do all that fun stuff. Now, as you remember, been a little busy with this fence, so I never got around to aerating and overseeding, which I should have done probably about a week and a half ago. Um, just never got around to it, but now things have kind of slowed down as far as projects around the house. I think it's about time for me to get that done. Um, I really need to get some seed down along where this fence was, flip it around here. So over here, there's a bunch of stuff that got torn up from the uh, dirt being dug up. A bunch of you know pretty thin bare spots all along through here. Not going to do anything through here. We might end up getting some more mulch or something through through there. I had a game plan that I was wanting to do this season to really help with the uh, the drainage of my soil, especially back here in the backyard. It tends to hold a lot of water back here by the playset. I did aerate it really good before the playset went in, and I had just a couple of bags of play sand that I threw down. Helped a little bit. But honestly, I should probably do it again and get even more sand to really hold the uh, soil open to uh, help with that drainage. The plan was this. I was going to aerate the living crap out of the yard, front, back, sides, all that stuff. And I wanted to bring in a lot of sand. And I wanted to rent a uh, kind of like a top dresser. Um, like well, these things you see like on the golf courses, like the Eco 250 or something where it just spreads out a crap ton of sand. Um... However, the uh, top dressers, closest one I can find is probably about 45 minutes away. So I really didn't want to have to drive West Bufu to be able to get a hold of a top dresser. Plus it's heavy, I don't have a trailer, so I'd be trying to load it into the back of a pickup truck. That's just not going to work very well. For the time being, sounds like that plane is kind of off. Um, I could get a bunch of sand and try to dry it out and try to use my uh, um, fertilizer spreader. I don't know how well that would go. I'm kind of kind of stuck with that, so I may have to wait until maybe next fall to try to do the uh, the whole thing with the sand. I might just kind of skip the aeration completely because, and honestly, you know, while core aeration is good, if I'm not picking all these plugs up, it's just going to break back down, end up back up in the soil, and I'm kind of right back to where I was. So that just means that I'm going to throw down some grass seed, and um, with this backyard. I have noticed a few things. There's some spots that's more high traffic. So some areas up through here tends to get a little bit more traffic. Right here in front of the shed, it has uh, kind of gotten pretty bare since I put the shed in. So you can see a lot of this has thinned out. Some of this didn't really grow in at all um, over time. And some stuff that is here has kind of just died off. And as you can notice, there is some grass blades that's turning yellow, but I'll get to that in a minute. The plan is, instead of me using all tall fescue through here, this is all the uh, GCI tall fescue. Been using it for a couple years now. Uh, this whole yard was renovated when I did the patio. Uh, nuked the whole yard. So if you haven't seen that, I have a, a full uh, video library called Backyard Renovation 2018. Flip through that, you can see all the stuff that I did back here. But... GCI tall fescue done throughout this whole backyard, which is why it is quite a bit darker here than up here. This is all GCI versus the rest of it. I've kind of done some overseeding with it over the past year or two to try to fill in some spots. It's kind of uh, greened up some of the rest of the yard, um, but still huge difference where uh, you have you know just a few species of the tall fescue versus the rest of the stuff up here that is, um, you know, some of the stuff that's been here for probably 30 years. But with this high traffic area, the tall fescue doesn't do as good with that. So I need something that's going to repair. So I decided this year to get a bag of the uh, GCI, what the heck is this called? Cool Blue or something like that, where it's um, tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass. I'm going to go through it and kind of hit this area just a backyard um, there are a couple spots in the front yard that were um, a little bit damaged i did find end up finding a mole in the front yard took care of him pretty quick 
but he had done a little bit of damage so i'm going to try to fix some of that there's some areas where there was a big patch of nuts edge and it left a little bit of a bare spot so i'll hit some of that so just a little bit of you know spot seeding with the uh with that new gci seed but this whole backyard back here i'm going to do a full-on overseed with it that way we can try to get some of that kentucky bluegrass to fill in and fix some of these high traffic areas so as they get damaged trampled around hopefully it'll kind of fill in a little bit better so um with that i mentioned some of those yellow grass blades so what i'm noticing there's some stuff yeah i had some remnants from some gray leaf spot and stuff like that but some of this other stuff that i'm seeing with these yellow grass blades is I believe I am dealing with some nutrient deficiencies and predominantly I believe it is going to be nitrogen defici deficiencies look at that so it's all just kind of turning yellow on me I do believe that's a, a nitrogen deficiency because the last time I had sprayed my uh, potassium nitrate and ammonium sulfate I was actually about three pounds shy of ammonium sulfate I typically do one pound per thousand um over 15,000 square feet and only had 12 pounds so that basically equates out to me doing about 0.8 pounds per thousand of the ammonium sulfate which gives me with the potassium nitrate maybe 0.2 pounds per thousand of nitrogen for the whole month so definitely didn't put a whole lot of nitrogen down so I still haven't got any more ammonium sulfate. I need to try to find the uh, site one that's actually down the street from me. I've never been in there. I'm going to try to go in there and see if maybe I can get a bag of ammonium sulfate. But for time being, I need to get some uh, nitrogen down. I do have some of the Propeat 1704, I believe it is. Now, I, I did a review on it, and basically my end result of it and thoughts of it was it's nitrogen you know some of these other other people were going about how great it was and it darkened up their lawn and blah 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 i didn't see it i just looked at it as like okay if i just need some cheap nitrogen and i can't even say cheap nitrogen because it was like what 60 bucks a bag 55 bucks a bag something like that so it's not exactly cheap and for the result that i got i thought it was a little pricey but i have about a half a bag left so just to get some nitrogen down i'm going to throw that down not expecting anything extravagant like oh my god you know the lawn is so dark green now i just need some nitrogen down to try to fix this yellowing of the grass so game plan today is i've got some grass seed i need to put down i've got some citric acid i need to put down to try to keep lowering the ph of my soil and i need to put some of this fertilizer down to fix the yellowing i want to try to see what i can do to get that done i really need to do the whole yard with the uh, citric acid the uh, fertilizer, um, spot seed, the grass seed, but we'll see where I get today. It's uh, kind of rainy. It did rain this morning, so I really wish I'd got citric acid down before it rained to water it in for me, but I didn't get to it. So um, let's see what I can get done.
So not everything in the videos are always rainbows and sunshines. As you can tell from some of my videos, sometimes crap goes wrong. So apparently when you have citric acid, you put it in the bottom. I didn't want to bring that huge uh, bucket out here. So I just poured what I needed in here. I poured it in here. I need my humic acid and I didn't put any water in here. And I just poured the humic acid directly in with the citric acid. Apparently what you get is rock. So apparently the bottom of it got all binded up with all the citric acid, humic acid. It's not dissolving. And then it bounced around, basically bouncing off rock, hit the side of my bucket there, blew the side out. I had about 70 gallons in there. I managed to have that bucket. Caught most of the liquid in there. But there's still some uh, citric acid sitting in the bottom of that, so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that out. Get everything mixed up properly into 15 gallons. But as it was blowing out, it started running down my driveway. So I'm doing the best thing I can do. Just running the uh, water hose, any citric acid and humic acid that was running down my driveway. Obviously it's gonna kinda of collect down through here. So I wanna get this all watered down. So I'm thinking I didn't actually get any humic acid, or uh, sorry, citric acid dissolved. It's all on the bottom. So the only thing in here really is humic acid and water. I try to put more water, see if I can dissolve it. It ain't doing anything. So it's about 15 pounds of citric acid that uh, pretty much went to waste. So lesson learned, water first, add your citric acid, then your humic acid. I was just being in a hurry, being lazy, wanting to get all my citric acid thrown in here and didn't really plan that out very well. All right, so obviously day one did not go as planned after busting out the side of the bucket, losing a bunch of humic acid and uh, water, and losing about 15 pounds of citric acid that basically turned into rock salt. But I did manage to kind of get everything worked out. I just used a little bit of that humic acid and water that was in that five gallon bucket. Just kind of separated out into another bucket, added my citric acid I need for each portion of my lawn, then put that in my sprayer and I was able to get that humic acid in there as long as my, as well as my citric acid. So right after I was done with each section, so the backyard I would do to 2000 square feet, go back over it real quick with a garden hose, try to water it in, hit my side yard over here, that's about 5000 square feet, got everything put down, watered it, and then this back section over here, which my front yard behind me, I did uh, about half the yard, sprayed it down and, and filled it up and then did the other section and then watered that down real quick since that's about 8,000 square feet. So I really had to hustle to get this side done. But it's all done and uh, no burning. And actually about nine o'clock last night after I got everything watered in and ate dinner, it sprinkled a little bit, go figure. But at least it helped water things in. So the only thing I have left is to do some seating in the backyard hit some spot seating up front. So I wanna to try to get to that real quick before it gets too dark on me. grass seed spread down nothing exciting nothing uneventful except maybe me stepping in maybe some dog diarrhea at some point <laughs> so thanks for watching hopefully this video i tried to make it a little more entertaining so thanks for watching give me some comments like subscribe all that good stuff and as always catch you on the next one god that shoe stank